Hi, welcome to Variety's TV podcast. I'm Deborah Birnbaum. Every week, we'll bring you conversations with some of the best and brightest in television, working behind and in front of the camera. On this week's episode, we're talking about NBC's Emmy-nominated This Is Us. We'll have Milo Ventimiglia, Starling K. Brown, and Chrissy Metz. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Deborah Birnbaum, and it's my pleasure to welcome Milo Ventimiglia, Sterling K. Brown, and Chrissy Metz. Hey, guys. Hello. How are you doing? We're doing all right this morning. How are you doing? doing I'm good. Good. First of all, congratulations on the Emmy nominations. Thank Thank you you very much. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. How does it feel? Um, Ask Sterling. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) Stop. No, it feels great. Like, honestly, the the show in total got seven acting nominations. You know what I'm saying? That's, for a network television show, for any show, that's huge. For a network show, to be a part of the conversation in that way is absolutely astounding. Uh, sometimes it makes me think like how the writers didn't get recognized mm-hmm. because we ain't coming up with this stuff on our own. <laughs> right. I think about 87% of what comes out of my mouth has been scripted. I, I, I get a 13% vamp. Wow. Justin <laughs> probably is about an 80% vamp. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would say Justin is at the high end. I'm like a 95. You're at a 95. Oh, yeah. Chrissy's 100%. 95%. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Mandy's 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Mets, but I'm saying like it's, I, I'm happy that we got this recognition. Yeah. I, hopefully as, the, as time goes by and the show gets more I hope the writers get their due as well. And directors. And directors, producers, like everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Every, everybody. It's funny. Everybody. It's, it's, it's such, it's one of those honorable things that you, you think about when you're a kid, but then it happens and you go, okay, great. Just get back to work and it doesn't change anything. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it continues, you know, like the heart you put into the work is the same as before. Yeah. Like the joy of showing up with. You know, this group of people, you know, with Sterling and and Chrissy and and everyone else that I don't get to work with and uh, and just (laughs) with everyone, you know, is is uh, it's a joy. Nothing nothing really changes. Oh, Oh, if only there were time travel. We need to figure out a way you guys can work together more. Well, the funny thing is, I mean, I feel like there is a version of time travel with our show. Um, You know, of course, Sterling and I got a chance to work together and Ron and I. So got a chance, and it's it's on Dan's mind because I'm definitely in Dan's ear saying, "Hey, hey, hey!" Selfishly, I really want to work with everyone. Sure, please. Well, and also people want to see us all together. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. right. And yeah. Speaking as a fan, yes, we all want to see you together. Yeah. <laughs> see, okay, good. See the kids with Dad. Right. right, all right. So you're back in production on season two. How's it going? It's going great. Cooking with Crisco, baby. <laughs> like, it's, it's like the scripts, like, they keep coming. Yeah. Like, you, you you have, like, the smallest amount of fear of, like, will there be a sophomore slump? Mm-hmm. And then you, you read 201, and you're like, no. Nah, no, nah, we're, yeah. we're good. We're good. And then we're you so hear good. about 201 from Ken and Dan, who have yeah. already had a edited together um, episode, and they're related. They're thrilled. Dan, yeah. or uh, Ken is shaking when he talks to you he's so excited i literally was like thank god yeah right because you have like a a time period where you're like at least i did where i'm like can i come back and do this like is it gonna be uh, uh," you know for me and i was like okay if ken's happy if dan's happy yes ma'am i'm happy yeah Yeah. okay good you read that you do that 202 we're working Mm -hmm. on 203 right now and four just came out too I'm in the I haven't sp- gotten to four. I haven't gotten to four yet. Yeah. What's it for? Four's, four's cool. Hey, Milo's fun. <laughs> Milo's clearly the only person that helps so far. Milo, he's, he's got, got, he's got the, the deeds. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's 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 all good. You know, the, the story shift. We go deeper into the past and mm-hmm. further into the future. And you know, I, I'm so happy that Ron is still a part yes. of the show. Yes, yeah, that's amazing. You know, like and and the scenes that they come up with for Ron and the way in which it's laid in. Like, each time, you're like, oh, oh, it's just right. Fogelman has really created Fogelman. this amazing setup to yeah. be able to <clears throat> jump around in the, in the storytelling world. And there's the linear story of, of what, you know, uh, uh, Kevin, Kate, and Randall experience. And then there's mom and dad in the past. But because we've been in all these different sides of it. Yeah. You know, with the passing of, of William, there's this opportunity to show a different side of his story still, right. and you know, with with Ron um, involved. Yeah. So it's it's really just it's beautiful. Again, it's 
I'm, I always just think about how lucky we all are, you know, that we get to be a part of a show like this and hopefully part of it for a long time. Amen. It's beautiful. I've been spending a lot of time in the writer's room just to see how the sausage is mm-hmm. made and just to see, like, the best idea wins. And yeah. it's so yeah. lovely to see the discussion and, and the pitches go back and forth and these conversations. We have three black writers we have women, we have men, gay, straight, and like they all just sort of like throw it all into the salad bowl, you know, and it gets shaken around and you come up with this beautiful, nutritious, healthy, entertaining meal. Yes. Yeah. And without nice analogy. I think without <laughs> I ego. Salad too. Yeah, yeah. And without ego, which is so right. important, I think from Dan to every single person involved in the show, it's it's not about, oh, I have to have my story thread mm-hmm. written in. It's what is best for the show and for the trajectory and the overall picture and I think that's how we should live our lives and so like how amazing that we're on a show that you know is good in every aspect there's also a lot of vulnerability mm-hmm. you know I, I met you know being in those rooms with the writers and having that vulnerability to speak up and tell a story you know having to as actors experience these things that we experience for these characters is that vulnerability I think is giving people a good lesson to be able to speak up with their emotions and their differences and start a conversation that is hopefully going to come to like a reparation you know where where you're going to come together and understand that being human's hard enough you know yeah. so hopefully you know given a lifetime you're you're happy yeah season 1 ended on cliffhangers for all of your characters mm-hmm. with the season 2 pick up right there is there a time jump season 2 I think I can say this season yeah. 2 picks up on uh, our 37th birthday for the big three. Mm-hmm. Not on your 37th No, not on my 37th birthday. Not on your 37th birthday, but on for the 37th birthday for the big three. And there are explorations of those cliffhangers. So you see Sis is exploring her singing career, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Randall and Beth are, you know, looking further into adoption. Um, Kevin is, his, his movie career is picking up, and so he's sort of now trying to balance that newfound fame with his relationship with Sophie. Um, and then in the past, what are you guys talking about? Yeah, you mom and dad. Mom and dad are are trying to figure out how it all went wrong. Yeah, that's how pretty much like a, a week or how how long after the um, finale? We we pick up very quickly. There's no time jump. Yeah, yeah. It's so pretty much so pretty it's good. it's uh, it's nearly a, a direct continuation um, of after dad left. Right. You know, after after Jack walked out the door, and all the questions that come up with. <laughs> this is so good. Like the, the past storyline in two hundred one. Like people are gonna be like, "Oh my god, this is so good." <laughs> it's so Sterling, good. Sterling just there, fell there back. There are moments when I need a video to go along with the podcast. It's so good. It's so. Good. It is. It is, and it's heartbreaking. And yes. it's and it's. Oh god, it's so relative to what I think a lot of us experience as people. Is you know, you, you you come to a crossroads where you're fighting for yourself, but then you're also fighting for someone else, and you're fighting for a family and for. Yeah. You know, something that you don't want to go away and you start doubting the decisions you make and, and, and trying to swim upstream again, so to say. But, you know, Jack and Rebecca are, are working on finding their way back to um, being together because no matter the argument, no matter, you know, these hurtful things that were said, they deeply love each other and they love their family and they know it's going to impact their family. And, you know, we, we, we see that going through, you know, how it catapulted the kids into into where they led for the rest of their life. Yeah. You you won't be disappointed. Yeah. I have every day. <laughs> you won't. How does Beth react to the idea of the adoption? Not well. <laughs> <laughs> she has she has problems with it. And yeah. and she has her own perspective and point of view on how things should go because Randall's enthusiasm can get the best of him sometimes. And the idea of recreating the scenario in which he entered into the Pearson clan is incredibly appealing to him. And it's not necessarily equally appealing to his wife. So it's now the two of them trying to get on the same page. If they're going to move forward with this idea, what works for the both of them, right? And so he just has to be able to listen to his wife and be open to her suggestions. And then we move forward from there. Beth keeps it real. She's 100. I love her. I love it. Like, like anytime Randall's just like, just like, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And she's like, well, you know, maybe we could do this. Maybe we could do it that way. She's the boss. And he'll be like, ah, yeah, okay, maybe. 
but wait, what we should really do is this. Yeah, she's, like, she's yeah, the realist. She's real. Yeah, yeah, she's dope. <clears throat> and Christy, what's going on with Kate and Toby? Well, you know, as we see in the finale, um, poor Toby. She's like, <laughs> um, just support me in my endeavors. Thanks. Um, well, he loves her unconditionally. Um, but, you know, she's going to be pursuing her heart's desires, which is, of course, music and following in her mother's footsteps. Um, but as, uh, you know, mid-30s, if not late-30s, unconventional woman in L.A. trying to pursue music, it's not always what it's cracked up to be. Or easy, and um, it'll be challenging, but really fun at the same time. But also, I think it goes to show that no matter what, it's never too late. You should always do what you want to do and what's placed upon your heart. So, um, but you know, I'm, I'm sure that it'll, it'll bring some some interesting things into the relationship of, of Kate and Toby and how that is all worked out on a daily basis. So, will we get to hear you singing again? Um, I believe so. I yes. believe so. I believe so. <laughs> Yes. I don't know what I can talk about. Where's Dan? <laughs> There's no one else in the room. You can talk. Oh. Yeah, I've it's heard that before. Here. No one else is here. It's just us. Yeah. Yeah. No um, one will listen to this. Yeah. No, okay, great. Um, but yeah, I, I will be doing a little, a little, a little singing, which is really just, I don't know. I'm like Dan. You're writing my dream life. Chrissy, so. may, I ask, may I ask a question? Oh gosh, <laughs> that is okay. You may ask a question. Is it true that when you did the time after time, the take that oh, they yeah. wound up onto the show, was that just you practicing and like you didn't know you were being recorded? Oh, I, I, we, re- yes, they recorded us live as I'm just, you know, doing the scene, and then he's like, oh, just sing the song, and I'm like, okay, and then he, John and Glenn. The trickery of both of those yeah. gentlemen. They were like, oh, we're just going to do the playback and we're going to keep that take. And I'm like, oh, God. Um, and I think mentally I wasn't prepared to, but it was fine. So beautiful. I think it was appropriate for Kate's journey and that it sure. wasn't going to be perfect. And she was very nervous and nobody could, well, everybody could care less about her singing because half of the people were asleep, if not like on their way out of this plane of existence. So, um, yeah, it was. <laughs> It was beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. And it's funny because, like, on set, like, you know, Mats will just be playing around and she'll just be humming or something will come out. And you'll be like, dang, come. Like, what? <laughs> oh, what? That's very kind. She's ridiculous. She's ridiculous. Oh, dear. Checks in the mail, Sterling. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> very kind. Yeah, but music is something that I've loved forever. So it's a, yeah, it's a really exciting thread and, and through line through the character so I love how it attaches you to your mom isn't that beautiful mm-hmm. yeah and how we're so influenced by our, our parents and um, I know my father he loved music and he influenced my interest in music and my my favorite genres of music and so I just think it's really great to see that and you know as parents we they you I think I mean I don't have children but I believe that parents always want their children to do better to be more successful to be happier to um and, you know, sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. But, um, yeah, there's so much good stuff. I can't, <laughs> like, oh, I can't say anything else. Well, it's, it's, Your it's, smiles are killing yeah. me. It's, it's a wonderful exploration because I, I always find, in my family, I don't know if this is true in everybody's family, but, like, mothers and daughters, that, that can be, oh. like, a very sort of frictionful relationship. You know what I'm saying? Especially when they have similar interests. So it's something yeah. that brings people together and can sometimes, you know, sort of magnets on opposite poles bouncing up against each other, you know? Hmm. Sterling is much more eloquent than I am. I'm, I'm <laughs> pretty good at, like, saying stuff without saying stuff. Like, that's what I try to uh-huh. specialize in. Well, giving the tease you perfected it. Without, you know, mm-hmm. giving a lecture. He's a tease, is what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> what about the brother-sister relationship? Are we going to get to explore more of that? That's what I'm hoping. Like, I'm in the writer's room specifically saying, like, look, you guys. Like, the Kevin and Kate relationship is very strong. And, and the Kevin-Randall relationship is very strong. Why has Kevin always got to be in the middle? I want a little bit of Randall-Kate time. Yes. So I've, I've said that a few times with the hopes that there will be something that will be coming later on in the season so I'm, I'm hopeful. sure that yeah. there will be yeah well also I mean in the when <clears throat> your characters are younger Randall and Kate are yeah. very close yes yeah. very so close so what has happened good yeah. question dum, dum, dum. it's a little twindom like the twins man twins are tight yeah. 
Like they are real, Dude, real yeah. tight. You know, they finish each other's sentences. They sure, like feel it. One person gets like poked, and the other one's like, ah. Yeah. So like Randall's just trying to find his way into this whole. Thing. In the meantime, uh, we pull up in a scene the other day, and Mandy Moore proceeds to say, "Oh, there's Sterling, the perfect child." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. She's, she specifically said Sterling, not Randall. Well, she meant Randall. I know, I know, I know what she meant. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. So, I'll send you my and sons, oh, right? yeah. Mothers and sons. We, we would yeah. think. We'd type. I'll send you my therapy bills, Mom. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. I love me some Which that's is so great. beautiful because you don't have to necessarily have a child to have such a beautiful bond with them. Yeah. And that's what I think is really special about that yeah. dynamic for sure. Yeah, it's cool. So all's good with Randall and Mom now? Yes. Yes. Thankfully so. Like that That was hard. That yeah. was not pleasant. Like even when I when we shot Thanksgiving yeah. and we were at the house, like it was I don't like occupying that space <laughs> yeah. for a prolonged period of time. And when it's a dinner like table scene with like coverage from sixteen different angles and you gotta stay in it the whole time, I was like, I want this scene to be over so I can give Mandy a hug. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that, was, that was the argument scene, same thing. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. it hey. goes <sighs> Yeah. It's not pleasant. And you but you have to put yourself in that place in order to try to communicate the truth of where the character is at that time. Yeah. Right? Um, but yeah, thankfully, we are simpatico. <laughs> my mom named Becky. I can't remember my mom's name is Becky, but yeah, yeah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me alone, Becky. No, that's my mom. I love her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. Milo, you were just talking about the argument scene. Are there more difficult scenes ahead for you? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. No. yeah, there's plenty. Wouldn't oh, be God. this is us, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be this there, uh, Do there. I need my tissues? Yeah. Yes, maybe. Um, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'll just the the so. word on the street from Ken and Dan <clears throat> that first episode was just a crusher. Um, in in regards to Jack and Rebecca and kind of what they go through and still have to go through. They, they came they came to the other side of the anger, but then what's on the other side of anger is hurt, and hurt is oftentimes much heavier and lasts a lot longer than the, the snap fire of you have to uh, allow anger. yourself to be vulnerable enough to feel the hurt you know yeah. what I'm saying like anger sort of keeps it at bay exactly yeah. and anger burns white hot yeah it burns white hot and then it cools <clears throat> off and it kind of goes away you're like no nah, it's good hey I was you know I said some things but but the hurt and the disappointment and the no, you know the, the cracked road you have to walk to to get back to you know uh, something better is is always hard it hurts so jack and rebecca i mean they they really do have a a difficult path ahead of them um and and we dive right into that in in the first episode and it continues you know they've got a long way to go they've been together for 20 some years i think when they had that argument so so imagine you know what a fracture that makes in 20 years and getting back to it and uh, you know, communication and intimacy and everything. There's so many things that, that just get disrupted. Before Deb asks the question, so how do you die? Like, <laughs> when, the psychic powers are working. When does, when does that pop up? Not like, you, Sterling. Not I know, you, too. I know, but I'm just, America wants to know. At two, at two Sterling. At two. Um, um, I like how Sterling does my job for me. Yeah, I know. Um, there, with, with with Dan Fogelman's <laughs> style of writing and storytelling, um, with every answer, there are twenty more questions. Um, he's that. he has said that, and and we all know that. In the in very quickly, you're going to know what happened, but you're not going to know the specifics or the details, and they're to be discovered. Right. But if you pay attention, if you really pay close attention, there are markers and symbols that will help you understand a greater yeah. mystery of, uh, of how Jack died. Yeah. And that's coming this season? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, in, in 201, there's, there's a couple of things that Dan does that, that's <laughs> really cool. I'm on Simo, but like, he sends us a script. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. With the final scene omitted. We don't even get it yet. Even though like we kind of understand or know, but... Just so we can't mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> he does that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no. Like, we're literally like, literally like literally omitted, omitted for secrecy. I think yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly what it was. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, was it we're M. Gonna M. Night Fogelman? M. Night Fogelman. <laughs> yes. Exactly. We're going to be well, blindfolded yeah. going to set soon. 
No, but the, <laughs> I, the, we have we have the group thread. Yeah. I think Chrissy was the first. First of all, oh, yes. Milo and I didn't get the script. Oh God, that was and a mess. Chrissy, there's a, like so <laughs> top secret thing to send the script and it couldn't come through. And it, it was got like it. coded and I couldn't send it. And I was like, but I've been sending it forward five times, but right. it wouldn't send. It wouldn't yeah. send. But she read it and she's like, oh, minute for secrecy. Yeah. What? I'm like, what? And you were like, what are you talking about? Yeah. What's a minute for secrecy? <laughs> was the script out? We didn't get script. Yeah. Didn't get script yet. And Maya and I. Like to have you see he has two oh four already. Yeah. We like to have stuff like yeah. ahead of the curve. And so we're like, yo, Chrissy, can you send it to me? She's like, I yeah. sent it. It didn't come through. It wasn't oh, wait, 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 but, sent. You know, but you know who came through? Who that was it? John Huertas. That's right. Miguel <gasps> had this. Today? No, Miguel read it before we did. Yeah. No. Like, he was, and he came through. He hit me offline. He's like, hey, oh my, dude, like, I'll, let me send it to you. And he sent it to me. Then and I, it came through. And it came through. I was like, hey, I'm still here. I'm like, let me get it. But then by that time. By that time, we had production already the worked thing. it out. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. But but yeah, we didn't even. Sterling and I didn't even know what was mm. going on. It's true. Yeah. Last question. Give me one word to describe the new season. It's It's epic. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, the the scope of a family drama on network television to be able to span time and space in such a surreal and real way simultaneously. I don't know how they do it, mm -hmm. but it's something for a family that feels larger than life. You know, it's epic. That's yeah. my word. I, I, what else is there to say? I'm going with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was looking at your face, though, Chris. You were thinking hard. You were I was just with... like, there's so. Yeah, how could you describe all of what it's going to be in one word? That's. Uh, let's, let's, I'm sorry. It's too hard. But Sterling came through clutch. <laughs> yes, so. epic. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Sterling. Thank, thank you, Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. Pleasure as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode. We'll be back next time with another one of my favorites, Carrie Coon, star of The Leftovers and Fargo. See you next time.